My name is Dr. Thelma Wells. I like being called Mama T though. That's my nickname and I'm Mama T to a lot of people. Uh, I have a Doctor of Divinity and that's why the doctor was there. However, it only means that I've been exposed to stuff. You know, it doesn't mean a whole lot. But I, I have, uh, I've been married to my husband for over 53 years. We have, yes, we have three children, nine grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and I hope that's all. But we, <laughs> but we have this wonderful family and we all live in the same areas of, of our city. Uh, I um, love the fact that I can talk to people all over the world and they know me as Mama T. However, I love mentoring, I love teaching, I, I love uh, loving on people because that's what I got when I was growing up. Uh, and I love the things that I do in this world and I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to deal with people all kinds. It doesn't matter whether they are wonderful or sad or happy or whatever. I get a chance to influence them and that's a blessing for me. So many people have influenced me, but when I think of the most, I think about my growing up living in the home of my great grandparents. And then my granddaddy would take me on a date every week. We would go to what's called, what's called the Majestic Theater. That's when we could not sit downstairs, we had to sit upstairs. But my, my great grandparents who raised me, taught me the social graces, took me to church, uh, just exposed me to everything, the symphony and all of those great things. And so, one of the things that they would always tell me, my granddaddy and, and my grandparents, great grandparents, they would say, Thelma, one of these days, things are gonna change for you. You see, they took me in 1943, okay? That kind of tells you how old I am. <laughs> and because there was so much in, uh, segregation, but they would say to me, one of these days you're gonna be able to go wherever you wanted to go, to eat wherever you want to eat. And remember, nothing can stop you from being the best. And so they were the ones that have influenced me the most in my life. I think one of the things that sticks out in my mind all the time is when I had cancer and I got so disgusted with things and I was praying, Lord, heal me, da 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 da. I couldn't hear a thing from him. And so one day I decided to stick my finger in his face. Okay? <laughs> and I did. I was very, very upset because, of, you know, I'm hearing nothing. And then he led me into a very special place in my house and started talking to me. I mean, he meaning God. Okay, I heard him talk to me in my mind. And he said, um, stop worshiping yourself. And I kind of argued with him because I'm pretty strong-willed. <laughs> I said, I don't argue with myself. I mean, what is he talking about? I don't worship myself. And then again, he said three times, stop worshiping yourself. And then they had to ask him, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm talking to God. And he said, when you try to solve your own problems, when you don't give all of your issues to me, when you think you know everything and you whine, complain, and behave like a victim, you are worshiping yourself. And I'll have no other gods before me. That was a very special moment in my life. I'd never thought that trying to work things out and figure things out was worshiping myself. He wants us to give him everything. And from that day until this in 2005, I've done my best to give him everything. I have not been perfect, okay, but I've done my best. That was a really defining moment for me. I wear a bumblebee all the time, and that has become my brand. And I talk about being aware of who you are. So I want them to know that they're special, that before the world began, God had already made them in the spirit. We were here, okay? It says that in the last book of the Bible, in Revelations. I want them to know that they're so special so no, nobody is like them. The, everything they have, their beauty, their what they don't think is beauty and all, is so unique to them. So I want them to be aware of who they are. 
I want them to learn how to deal with situations without folding up, without giving in, if you will. I want them to know that there are ways that you can deal with every situation. I've written some books about that without selling yourself, okay, cheap, all right? I want them to know that. Uh, I want them to know that life is not fair. And the word fair is nowhere in the Bible except when it's talking about somebody looking pretty. It is, isn't that? So I want them to know everything's not going to be fair. Everybody's not going to love you. But if you love God first and yourself, you can make it through anything. All right? Then I want them to know that the only thing that really matters in life is their heart, how their heart is. And if their heart is full of love and accepts that love that Jesus gives them, they can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. They can lose things. Everything can happen to them. But their heart will make a difference. So that's what I want them to know. I want them to know also, Mama T loves them. Uh, I started in corporate America in 1972. There was not much gender equity, quote, in quote, in 1972. However, one of the things that I did, and I, I tell young people, apply yourself where you are. Don't just be average. Don't just be ordinary. Be extraordinary. And how can you do that? Get as much education as you can. Understand the social graces. Be able to, to communicate effectively. Never go to anybody with a problem without uh, having it already solved, even if they don't accept it. I'm talking about in corporate America. The other thing is, don't think of yourself as less than. And that's what we've done for years. Why? Because we've been told that. Don't believe everything you're told, okay? <laughs> uh, I, um, a man asked me on another television program, uh, how have you been so successful being a black woman? And I said, oh, well, I tell you what, I've never really considered myself a black woman as such. I considered myself a capable woman who happens to be black, and I'm proud of that. So we've got to change our thinking, you see. As, as somebody has said, our stinking thinking. We've got to change that. We've got to look in the mirror and say, I am qualified. Tildy, let me tell you, I have been the first at many things that I've done in, here in Dallas, Texas, okay? I have a list on my website of being the first. I was the first black woman to be hired in a, a John Deere company in the Southwest. Why? Because I heard they, had, they wanted somebody uh, there who could do, do what I do. I walked in, looked cute. <laughs> That's when I was smaller, okay? But I looked cute. <laughs> I had my makeup on and I had my confidence right here. And when I walked in to Mr. Bill Malone's office, I shook his hand, looked directly in his eye, and said, hi, I came to interview because I'm going to work for your company. Now, I've gotten several jobs like that. I was the first black woman to be a assistant vice president at North Park National Bank. Why? I worried them. I got on that last nerve. I would go and sit in the office and say, I'm capable of learning. I don't know all that you know, but I'm capable of learning. They hired me in self-defense, I believe, okay, because I was getting on their last nerve. But, but that was not the end, because when I got in, I knew I didn't know about banking. You know what I did? I went and I took every banking course I could take. When I finished that, I started teaching banking for the American Institute of Banking, first black woman in the South to do that, okay, because I had the confidence to know that I don't care what anybody else is being, is being paid. I know what I'm worth. Every time I would ask for a raise, except once, I got a raise. I might not have gotten you know, what somebody else was getting. I wasn't even looking until I became a supervisor that I knew. <laughs> but, I would always, but I would always say that I'm worth more than they thought I was worth. So it's, it's, a, it's a mindset. Okay, and it isn't a greed mindset. It isn't an arrogant mindset. 
It is a knowing that you are capable of doing what you do. I can't do everything. So the things I cannot do, I'm not going to worry about it. But what I know I'm good at, oh yeah, yeah, somebody's going to hear about it. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so many wonderful things. I'm only 73 years old, okay? I'm going to live until I'm 100, 120. So the next phase is that I'm going back to women of faith, people all over the country. I've spoken to 400,000 women a year. I'm going back to that venue uh, very, very soon. The other thing, the company that we own, my daughter Vicky and I, own is That A Girl and Friends Speakers Agency. Well, what we're doing is creating tours. So the first tour that, that we've already gotten uh, assigned for, I have, is called Hippies Again. How about that? I was never a hippie, but I'm gonna go into the assisted living homes, not necessarily assisted living, but the upscale uh, homes where the people have sold their homes and they're living there, and I'm gonna teach them how to get out and live, all right? In fact, a funny thing, I told my daughter, if I ever have to go and live in one of those posh homes, find a good one, okay? And find one with an elevator large enough to get my scooter in there. Because I'm going to be scooting to everybody's room, giving them a seminar whether they like it or not. Because I, I, will, I will never give up. And so that's what I'm going to be doing, going to these wonderful uh, senior citizens' villages and motivating. We have a number of other tours that are going to be going out this year, which is absolutely marvelous. Uh, I am also speaking in churches for conventions, for conferences, all over the world. I've spoken in every state of the Union and in uh, 39 foreign countries. And yeah, and so I'm not stopping. Oh, my husband and I have a f running joke. And I always say to him, never underestimate the power of a woman. You say we can't do it? Okay, we'll find a way if we really want to do it, all right? Uh, women have such sweetness about them, such uh, deliverance, uh, 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 delivery about them, such um, tenacity. Until so I never underestimate the power of what a woman can do when she puts her mind to it. Okay? Now, the, the catch is women thinking they can do it and putting their mind to it but getting prepared to do, and I can't say that enough, getting prepared to do, we are not prepared, just like little babies, have to learn how to walk, talk, and all. We have to learn how to do a lot of the things that we need to do, but never stop learning. I was the first black professor at a Masters International School of Divinity. 61 years old, I went back and I got my Masters, 61. 62 years old, and they said I couldn't do it, I got a doctorate. So never stop learning. The power is within your heart and your head, and nobody can take that from you. Nobody can take away what you've learned, nothing like that. The other thing is, stop allowing yourself to be abused. Now, okay? I don't care what, what any woman I'll say said, there is some abuse somewhere. And men too, men too. It's sometimes it's from our lips, sometimes it's, it's physical, but you are two wonderful women to allow yourselves to be abused. God never, never meant for that to happen. So get some help if you are. You go seek some counseling if you are. And if you think you're abused, and maybe you're not abused, maybe you came up in something that was abusive to you, you still do the same thing. I wrote a book on uh, depression. And much depression that we have is not clinical, it's situational. I went through that a little while. Uh -huh. I abused myself. You know why? Stinking thinking. For about three years, I was just in this pity party. <laughs> Because <laughs> my husband is working all the time and he's not here with me and my grandmother died. Get over yourself. 
Okay. <laughs> and so I have five or six ways in my book that you can get over that and go do what you were born to do. God made us all. And when he made us all, he gave us all skill, all everything we need to be able to accomplish why we we're born. I did not pick my profession. God did years ago. And I've accepted what he's done and I love it. If I can just talk all day, okay, about the things that I love, which I believe are things that are right, I do it because that's who I am. Women, there's power when you know who you are and when you serve someone who has lifted you up and turned you around and put your feet on solid ground.